Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Thursday. Good to have you all back. Uh, this is here for a reason. We'll get into that in a sec. I uh, hope you're all well. Um, got a bit done last night. Was super mega tired, but I did stay up a bit to get the photos done at least. So they're ready to go. I've got them all in tip files so I can add them into the movie. Uh, on Premiere Pro, and yeah, just get it, and I'll put everything into that. So it's just sitting there as a, as a basically a project, and now just got to put it together. So uh, that sounds easy, but it's not. It's, there's a fair bit to do. Um, I'll have a fair crack at it tonight. Whether I can get it all done tonight, I, I probably doubt it. I'd say it'll probably be tomorrow night. So it'll be hopefully I should be able to upload it Saturday. YouTube for you to watch over the weekend, which is probably not a bad thing. Having something drop out Friday or Friday night or Saturday morning is a good good time to have it. Um, and you can watch it when you get a spare chance and you want to just sit back and relax and have a let me do the talking. Uh, Saturday or Sunday is not a bad idea. So all looking well on that one. Um, yeah, I've got I've got about. There's four photos there which give you a description of the uh, area and then I've probably got about number seven, eight photos I've narrowed it down. I didn't want to put anything not good enough. Um, some ones there, I, I did take some bird ones with my big 300mm Super Takamar, just weren't in focus. Uh, they were pretty darn close. Uh, it's really tricky with a manual focus lens to try and nail focus when, they're move, when the birds are moving. Uh, even one that wasn't moving, I had some branches in between and I think it was, I had it in focus, but I'm, it was only a one one hundred from a second, so it wasn't fast enough, so there's a big old 300mm lens on an M50 and they're shake. So it just wasn't good enough, so I threw them out, put them in the back blocks and um, yeah, I'm, the ones I've put up I'm, I'm really happy with and I think there's enough there to give you a little taste of something and show you the area. John Forest National Park, a little bit, a little bit of a taste. My first initial visit there, so definitely something cool, but not far away. <clears throat> now, what? Why I did have my <clears throat> new? This is the new one, the carbon fiber. <coughs> excuse me, the 67 inch uh, newer tripod. I've had it for I don't know what three weeks now, three maybe. Four weeks and super stoked, super stoked. Uh, look, if you can afford a, a top of the range, good quality, like a three-legged thing, that's my dream tripod. I'd love to be able to get one of them. Uh, the I think the one I'll be looking at's four or five hundred around that mark for a carbon fiber. The the steel version of a new one is fantastic for video with a video head on, which come with this tripod. Um, I'll put that on my big newest aluminium one which is solid as a rock so it's perfect for video <coughs> excuse me and um but for travel and run around on especially on the bmx and the backpack having the cover so light so so light but it has been super stable the only thing i've had it i have put my panoramic eye shoot head on it um that allows me 360 degrees with all my marks and then i can just I get a fixed rotation, which come in handy the other night at Mundarin because one of the, a couple of the panoramas, I use that so I could just get a direct vertical. So I could get my alignment and I just did a vertical shoot up the, up the galactic core. And because that's straight, it was just a matter of just loosening it up and just rotating it back. And I, I've got my increments, so I can go five, 10 degrees, however far you want. So you can match it up so you get the exact same thing. So that was pretty cool. But this carbon fiber, uh, yeah. Look, if you can't afford an expensive tripod, and they're not cheap, I understand that I can't afford an expensive one. I've, I'm trying these new, uh, these newer brands have been really good. The aluminium one's been fantastic. Um, definitely great quality for the price for a hundred bucks. You can't go wrong. I think my big aluminium one was less than a hundred, and I think this was. $109 on eBay, so eight times carbon fiber, like it's solid as a rock, it really is, 
and I haven't had any dramas with any of the photos that I've taken on it. Um, the only thing I would have liked is uh, these are like glued on feet. That's the only drama where the aluminium one has got the screen so I can put spikes or uh, other tips in there. That's the only thing I would, that it does have a bag carry if you want to the extra weight if it is a really windy area, but it has been fantastic and so it's so easy to just chuck that in my backpack now and forget about it and pulling it out. Everything's working. I have I've had it in water um, and no drama. So I thought I'd just share that with you. I guess I can go through a whole review, but it's just a tripod. There's only like two moving parts or three moving parts. It doesn't have the flexible head of the other one, but that's more video centric. Yeah, my other newer one, that was that was pretty cool. But I'm super, super impressed with this. Um, if you are looking for a cheap and you want to try carbon fiber for that lightness, definitely check out the newer on eBay. Uh, gold, really, really good. And I've been super happy. I can definitely recommend it, giving it a crack. And then once you, I guess, you get to this, and now I've got this, I know that. I, want to do want a second one I don't want to get another heavy one um, I can either get another one of these or I can look at a better quality one that I can use for my photos and then use this for my video so for a hundred bucks you, can, you really can't go wrong uh, to test test concept and see if it's what you're after and I think it's like 67 inches so it's perfect for me because I'm six foot one I can actually get up here and, and shoot here from just doing normal shooting or I can go down and move it and adjust it to suit. Um, it's just got the flexi buttons there for the lockouts. So that's pretty cool. And you can remove that one and flip it upside down. So all the stuff. Very super, super, super quick review. But because I'm so impressed, I wanted to tell you if I, if I get something that I really enjoy, I have no problems sharing with you. Radio, uh, fishing side, Lawrence, uh, if you've got a Lawrence sounder, they do a really good sounders. Uh, Rubber Law's got one, awesome quality. Uh, they've also moved into like the uh, Garmin, like the forward scoping as well. Uh, well, they've just released a new mapping system. It's called C-Map. Um, it's basically an advanced topography map and it also gives you underwater. So it'll give you full satellite images of the area. Um, as well as full underwater top, top, topography maps. So you can see where there's bombies and all sorts of stuff, super detailed, uh, it's got depth measurements, all sorts of different stuff that can make your planning a fishing trip super, super easy and more, probably more importantly, it's super safe so you don't need a rock bar or anything stupid and smash a $30,000 engine on the back. Um, if you WANT guys, the, it's probably the most expensive card of the lot. They do cover different areas around Australia, uh, and I'm sure in your local area, if you're in the States, uh, they'll have different areas for different states, so just check out the different prices of the cards. For the Australian one, most of the other ones, they start about 300 to about 400. The NTWA one, which covers a massive area, basically covers the whole bottom whole coastline of the WA all the way up around Darwin and the top. You get all that for uh, to $900 for this, car, for this car. But it is super, super detailed, super good. It'll do river systems and everything. Obviously they didn't have, I, wanted, I would have liked to have gone and check if it does give you any sort of details on rivers like the Daly River or Shady Camp or anything like that. <clears throat> I haven't seen anything in that. If you do have one of these new C map cards, if they've only just been released, if you do get one, can you let us know down below just how good they are for the rivers? Uh, obviously, for the oceans, I have no doubt they'll be uh, tickety boo, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what sort of detail it does have for these rivers using their high powered satellites and to get all this stuff. So, pretty cool, and I thought it's uh, just a good mention because having good maps uh, can make planning like in photography. Uh, the right tools to plan before you go can make the difference coming home with a photo or coming home with a fish. So go check that out if you have a Lawrence sounder. Uh, Samsung S20's hit a few problems. The, and not, not a good resolution either. The camera glass, so it's got the big, that's the one with the big rectangular glass on the back of the cameras. Um, that's uh, just randomly just crashing. Um, don't know what's going on, just crashing, 
leaving big holes in, sorry, my camera app has just faltered on me and now my phone's playing up. Just give me one sec. And uh, yeah, so the back of the phone where the camera app is, that glass is just cracking and leaving massive holes, just randomly exploding uh, for no reason whatsoever. And um, yeah, not good. Biggest problem being is that Canon or Sam Samsung are refusing to do it under warranty. Apparently it's not uh, covered under that and they're not they're refusing to do it so that is really bad they're going to charge people in the states four hundred dollars us just to fix the glass which is just ridiculous um yeah some pissed off people obviously that have bought this 1500 us so that's roughly two and a two and a half thousand i think they are in australia so you get a two and a half thousand dollar phone that just randomly disintegrates and samsung said oh too bad too sad we're not doing that Catch you later. So, yeah, not good. Uh, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed off too, and I don't blame them. Um, keep an eye out for that. There's going to be more coming out of that issue. Not good, Samsung. Right, uh, over on the COVID-19, last pretty slow day on, on tech-wise. So not a lot to sort of let you know. So that Lawrence one was a big one. And NT, Northern Territory, where I'm from, uh, is reducing restrictions and they're opening up a fair bit. Uh, they've added think total of only 67 cases NT wide of the COVID-19 they as of tomorrow they're basically opening up outdoor events so that's like full open uh, weddings can go on again um, sports stuff like that that all opens as tomorrow as of May 15 their stage 2 comes in place now you've got to remember their borders are still sort of shut so you can't just go oh you beauty let's go to the territory uh, unfortunately, it's, in that regards, it's still come. If you come in, you're there for 14 days, you've got to isolate and then you can do your business. But as of the 15th of May, stage two indoor events will open up. So that's pubs and clubs. Of course, all this still entails you to have your 1.5 meters, obviously no handshakes, none of that. You still got to have your social distancing. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit different and a lot more relaxed. Obviously, they're very lucky. They've had very, very minimal cases and not too many sick from it. So that's awesome. That's good because my old man's there uh, and the last thing I need, he needs is that. So that's good to see. Great to hear for you guys up in Darwin. Uh, awesome. Enjoy your freedom. Uh, there's a lot of jealous people around the world of yours. Uh, that's pretty cool. So that means you can go fishing again with your mates um, and all that. So if you do have some time off, Now's your chance, it's as of tomorrow, you're good to go. And I'm sure this weekend, every boat ramp in the territory will be absolutely jam packed. Um, and yeah, I oh, don't blame them. That would be very, very cool. We were supposed to be at the Barrett Classic uh, as of, I think, a couple of days ago, I was supposed to be in Darwin. And I think it was supposed to start next week or in, a, in about a week's time, two weeks time. Um, not to be, but um, yeah, I guess, enjoy it while you can so that's good a lot of the businesses that are related around fishing and um, travel in the territory this will help them out a lot at least for locals to get out and about and see stuff so very cool um, now some other stuff in the COVID area the US is trialing an Ebola uh, viral drug and it's called a Nendisifer or I think it's Nendisifer um, it's improving recovery time by about four to five days from 15 to about 11 on their te current testing and it seems to be slowing down the rate of infection pickup so it's I think the biggest positive out of this a they're looking at expanding the use of it to, to help out with that recovery so that's really good but I think the biggest positive that the doctors were saying the head doctor from the United States was saying the fact that it has an effect on the virus is the most positive because it proves that drugs can actually stop this thing. So that is really good. Um, baby steps, obviously, all the way. But when we do get a vaccine, if it's if it's a right and, and it does work, it, it should be a pretty locked in and loaded and smashed this thing out of the park. So that's really, really positive from that standpoint. Obviously, for the guys that have it, it's going to help them recover quicker. For if you're going through agony and pain, 
four days less of that is going to be friggin' awesome. So this might be something that can help them out for the short term, but it does prove long term that we do have a really positive outlook. So that's that's really good uh, for the whole world, for the third world countries, because they're obviously going to rely on the vaccine because they can't get this um, medical support that a lot of first world countries have. Um, so yeah, I think it's really good, super, super positive, and we're getting a lot more positives in the last couple of weeks, and this is another one on the road to recovery. And that's about it. Um, yeah, so another day. Uh, that's Thursday. I'll be back tomorrow for the last day of the week. Not long to go. What are we into? 30 days, I've said now, April, June. Last day. So tomorrow's the first day of May. That month has gone quick. Holy hell, April flew through, especially when I'm just sitting around at home, not doing much. <laughs> Um, hope you had a good Thursday, Friday to come if you are working and maybe, I know WA restrictions have eased up a little bit here, we can have, you can have up to 10 people. I'm sure this weekend we'll see a few people catch up with their best friends and family and stuff like that and just do a, a local catch up and just sort of re-equate yourself with society a little touch. Uh, hopefully WA down the road in the next week or two, maybe they can move to similar sort of restrictions to the NT. We might be on the way back to the same level then. Our uh, events have dropped and we seem to have a little bit of a, we're having a good run in Australia at the moment due to that lockdown at the start. So it's all been worthwhile and we're coming into the back end of it. Rightio, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening. Whether you're coming, Go on. I'll see you all soon. Peace.